Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Virtual GT World Challenge run here on Xbox with the boys over at VGT. I'm your host, Andrew Gatton, once also known as Sean, according, <laughs> according to League <laughs> Owners. Um, and I'm joined tonight by the one and only Aces. How are you, mate? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Sean? Uh, you know, truly magnificent, the fact that my new name is now Sean. Makes me feel <laughs> fantastic. Sorry about the delay. We said we'd be live at half past, but then my Xbox started doing weird things and then crashed. So we're back, and we are on board with Alex Myers at the moment as he is going through the final sector of practice at the moment. Um, I just realised I've actually turned very important information off when I was having those issues. So I'm going to go and just quickly shove them back on. We need, also need to transition the scene. Yeah, I know. I'll they'll, <laughs> they'll get to see it all right when I'm finished. All right, because I'm Ooh. having I'm having massive massive issues today. Everything's not going my way. It's the day of the general election. I still haven't voted because I don't know who to vote for. Because every single party that I've ever thought about, I it doesn't interest me. So, you know. We're here. We're what? Two minutes into the stream, it's already got political. Listen. <laughs> Love to see it. I will say the H word. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> right, where the hell is the thing that I'm looking for? I need... I need the always on for that. Auto MFD. This is crazy, guys. I This is why I don't stream on Xbox anymore, because it's really, really bad. Did that save? I guarantee you that didn't save. It didn't. It didn't save. There we go. We've got the <laughs> session information up on the screen now. And I'm going to transition these over go. so you get to see this fantastic camera angle. And this is where stream one crashes. No, it didn't. It didn't crash. Welcome into the stream, guys. Congratulations on the new V starting up today. Uh, we're at Misano. If you haven't worked out already from the two corners that you have seen. Um, and again, I am joined by Aces. He's giving a fantastic commentary of me commentating at the moment, which is making me so happy about myself. Um, Don't worry, I'm yeah. <laughs> Got some information for you guys. We're going to have a pretty stacked grid today. Minimum numbers expected 23 drivers turning up today. And to top it all off, right, to top it all off is that we've got some very quick drivers out there mixed with some slower ones to say the least as well from what i've heard we've got a very mixed grid a couple of drivers sort of hitting the low 134s at the moment as you can see there mcmillan getting something in the door um both who obviously didn't join the server correctly prior to the race start the other day and hasn't had his name to him. so that's going to be on him and nobody else a couple of drivers in the pits at the moment we're just sitting on the camera inside the car and while we get used to things just make sure that you're hiding um, a little bit of information about Misano that you didn't know it's in the north of Spain apparently it's not, it's actually in north Italy some people confuse Misano with a couple of other tracks that are in Spain that are supposedly in the north um, a lot of people prior to this were calling this Ricardo Tormo which is not Ricardo Torgo, even though they are both motorcycle tracks. This is not. Uh, a race track with a great history that not many know about. It was opened in 1972, making it 51 years old, turning 52 very soon, which is actually incorrect. This is a very incorrect history. Um, this was four years ago, so it makes it... How old does that make it now? It's 2024, so... so. Oh, no, it is, no, it's 51. Because it is in August. Yeah. Oh, it is 51. Yeah. My bad. You can it. It's held international races since roughly 1980, with motorcycle races, and still to this day is a major part of motorcycle racing history, with a lot of drivers loving the nature that is the Misano Grand Prix circuit. Um, since 2015, it's hosted the GT World Challenge, is what we are, and even this year it held Formula E, which was a shorter, slightly you know, Formula E design track that was run with Porsche winning that race. So if you watch Formula E, that would have been great for you to enjoy. But yes, it's been big in track race. It's, it's even bigger than 
sort of truck racing community. It's one of the major hosts of the European Truck Racing Championships, and it's got its own shorter layout for those that like to drive on a, in a truck or around a racetrack. I, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Aces, you got any ideas? Seems on that? a bit odd. It does. I I am lucky enough to know the commentator who does the truck racing. I forgot what the series is called, but I know it's definitely the British series of truck racing. And genuinely, it's half and half. It's very Marmite, you could say. You either love it or you hate it. It's, I've, I've just found it, it doesn't suit me. It seems too boxy racing. I always thought the M6 was such a large car, but then you hop into a lorry and then it's like, it's, I, I don't know. I've got very mixed feelings on it, but it does provide some very, very good racing over time as well. It seems that a set of course of competency only has crashed. Um, once again, for the second time today, we're going to just quickly just transition these over into the Be Right Back screen. Um, while I continue on with this, uh, the track that we are racing around today is the GP circuit. That's 4.226 kilometers long. And for the Americans, that's 2.626 miles in length because what the fuck is a kilometer? The track record is a 120.785 and that was set from a Formula Regional 3.5 car in 2022 by Harold Siegel, Sieg, Siegel Mills. What a name. What a name. <laughs> and uh, it. tonight we will see roughly 23 to 27 cars taking the track depending on if people will want to jump in to this racing. It is single class tonight, all GT threes, and we'll be catching up with some of the drivers before their stints and after to see how it is going. So again, bear with me while a set of course a competizione takes the you know, the mick with me once again. Um I don't understand why it's crashed on me twice. I think it's the UI. It doesn't like it. Um and I don't know why, because it's not like it's being outsourced anywhere. Um, it's kind of frustrating, as you can imagine. Um, but, you know, we're here for it, chat. We're here for it. And I'm just going to make sure I get back in the server. And I guarantee you, I will have to put the password in once again. It makes me really happy with everything that goes on in my life. That this is something that I'm having to deal with in 2024. <laughs> Um, do, do you want to do you want to just focus on doing that? I can uh, like entertain them for a bit. You, if you, you want, can do some entertainment. I'm you, frustrated. You, you seem a bit stressed. But obviously, we do have quite a uh, large grid here tonight. As well, you would imagine for a starting of a season here, I believe. Yeah, as you said, twenty-three to twenty-seven cars are predicted to be here for tonight. Starting on Masano is a difficult track. To be fair, very very. Uh, good on tyre wear there as well as we did here in driver briefing it is all normal settings which is good to know so it's all down to real life tyre wear and we do see with a track like Misano as well it is definitely one of the more difficult ones when it comes to track limits it's not very tolerable when you go outside of the white lines just like you would see in real life as well we have seen many many penalties well I have anyway uh, when I broadcast it around here and I expect the same here for tonight it's just obviously as well Xbox uh, is obviously more people playing on controller. I'm not sure how many people are playing on controller compared to wheel here tonight, but that is just going to be another factor for it. I believe most of them will be playing on wheel here tonight. As we do see the two Ferrari 296 is that I assume the same team that both in the same livery that obviously uh, PC have the luxuries of being able to have your own custom liveries uh, with actual decals and stuff, whereas console you have to obviously have just the livery designer that you have been provided in ACC and we do see we are ah, just creeping ever so closer to the end of free practice and nine minutes left to go we will attempt to try drag some people in here uh, towards the end of free practice but obviously you might have to just do it to uh, post race interviews if obviously not everything gets sorted in time but that's completely up to you Andrew yeah. Yes, as as said previously, we will drag some drivers in here if they would like to chat. All they need to do is just, you know, reply to us in the chat that will be adding their name in the Discord. That will be Aces that will be doing that while I'm controlling the broadcast. 
but if you can reply yes or no and then jump into the interview room, we'll jump in with you, have a little chat and then we'll hop back to the racing and let you get to it as well. As said previously, it is one of those things that tonight we will try and catch a few drivers in the next couple of minutes prior to qualifying. Um, we'll maybe start with Mr. Lynch because I'm on board with him right now. He's in the Porsche, the number 11 Porsche. Currently sitting 10th in qualifying. It'd be nice to have a wee chat with him and seeing how the Porsche feels around this track. I can't imagine it's very fun. So if we could just get himself here, that would be ideal. Hopefully we'll get him in. Um, and then we'll jump in. Oh, he's just had a big off. He's lost the back end. He might join the chat now and <laughs> tell us exactly what happened there. Um, I can't imagine it was very fun going off the track the like that. Porsche, in general, the Porsche is just absolutely awful. We have the, uh, uh, obviously, the 992 coming in. Was it earlier last year or this year? It was early it last was, year, was yeah. Last year? Wow, it's been quite a while now. It's one of the more competitive cars in this grid, obviously, at the M4. And potentially now the M4 Evo that's supposedly coming out in 2025 for real life racing, which usually means we get it. But if that means AC Evo, uh, when that is pre to be released at the end of this year, we'll get it. We'll have to see. And I'm not sure what's going to be the uh, future of ACC if it's going to be discontinued, uh, like what we saw with AC. Uh, but that's all obviously for the future to hold as well. The Mustang as well being one of the next gen Evo cars as well, not being one of the more competitive ones though. We haven't seen many good results with it in ACC, but on the PC side anyway, I'm not sure. It shouldn't make much of a difference between PC and console, I'm sure. Uh, they are still using the same BOP system as applied as we do now. See, goes into the final corner, not seeming to be... Is it a valid lap time? I'm not too sure yet. It's we'll definitely go across invalid no, but It's not going to be. Um, it's definitely going to be an invalid lap time. <laughs> if, if somehow that becomes valid, it's a question for the stewards there, because that was a considerable track limit, in my opinion. But a 137 from himself in the Mustang. I was going to say, it as you said, it is a car that has great potential, but unfortunately in the BOP system that is a settled course of competency only. It's not amazing. Now, we have seen how good it is with the Le Mans series and seeing how well that car has started to perform in there. We also saw a little bit of a sneak peek of its road going predecessor at the Nordschleife trying to set a lap record. I can't even remember if it did manage to succeed in that conquest, but the GTD, however, um, a very lovely looking car. It's it's a road going GT car and that's what we've been wanting for years is something that looks similar to what you see on the racetrack that you can drive on the road. And I really do enjoy <laughs> seeing how it'll perform in this race alone. I don't think it's going to do the, the God's work would be the words that uh, Henry Ford would say. Uh, but I think it'll do something today and I, it might, we might actually see it become quite a nice mid-pack offensive drive from him potentially to get into the higher points but a mid-pack car to say the least he's struggling a little bit through here he's going to go into the pits now I don't blame him it's one of those things that it does make things a lot harder we're going to see if we've got anyone for an interview have we got an interview Maybe tag Tom the Lynch. interview racing yeah. room to see if we can get him in there. Uh, just because it would be nice to see if you'll want to have a wee chat prior he's, to qualifying. He's been tagged. He needs to restart his console. Ah, going back right. to your earlier statement, are you saying none of the other manufactured cars look like the Road Vision cars? Because they have obviously have to be homologated. I would, but, I would argue that there is some cars on the grid to this day that do look like they're, you know they're going around on the road just exactly the same right the one argument i've always had is that the f8 also known as the the new ferrari is the f8 for those of you that don't know it's road going predecessor um or road going homologation in many ways for the uh, different authorities in the world it does not actually have similar body panels as it was found out and there was a bit of an argument about that when the car first appeared at last year's Daytona 24 hours. 
Um, not many body panels had been designed for the car. The car was only only just a few months out of full development, and they hadn't fully uh, got it going. And it was a bit of a rushed job. The car set the cars that were on the grid set themselves on fire, or decided to get rammed up the backside and had to get replacement parts. Um, and unfortunately, not many of them managed to finish the race in good working order. But that's what happens so, in in racing, and I would argue that it doesn't look like it. As well, the Ferrari F8 and the Ferrari 296 are the same. They are. Is that what you're saying? Is are the they? F8, the F8 Trebito, or whatever they're calling it, is similar. It's pretty much the hard It looks version. very similar. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's what it is. It's a it's a car that's made from the 296. And it's just what it is. Show number 27, please. I don't know if I can get to number 27, but we'll try and get there. It's just giving me a bunch of different things here. Um, I wonder um, if there's a way of me just being able to maneuver that doesn't involve me jumping around the circuit. Uh, I'm guaranteed... Let play. We do through. actually have uh, Tom Lynch in. Cool shit. Now, welcome on in, Tom Lynch, one of the uh, fastest, and I believe one of the youngest on the grids. Am I correct or am I wrong? Are correct, yeah. Oh yeah, you sound younger than me. <laughs> How's it going, mate? Not too great. Xbox is messing up, but it's what it is. Oh, uh, obviously you're being one of the faster drivers on the grid. It's a track not many people like. Do you agree in the same way as that, or do you disagree? Uh, honestly, not a, not a big fan either, but. I like the track because I'm quick, I guess. So, I haven't been able to see your times that you're playing in. I just know you're quite fast from people saying in chat. What times are you currently doing? I want to see uh, um, what reference points we have. Before I disconnected, I had like a 36, 8, something like that. Yeah, okay, I'm not sure how much of a difference there is between PC and Xbox. It does seem to be a tiny bit there. Uh, as well as that, we have obviously a 30 minute qualification session coming up next, which you want to be getting ready and prepared for. But in terms of race predictions, obviously we don't want to jinx you at all. Where would you like to end up? Obviously it's now a race, so there is quite a bit of time for mistakes, but also quite a bit of time for gaining. Where would you like to end up by the end of the race? Top five, preferably, but you know, carnage can happen and get unlucky. You could get lucky there as well, thinking of it. Do you have, if you're allowed to say, obviously, uh, because I know a lot of people are very competitive about this, do you have any preference to your strategy here for tonight, or are you going to keep it undisclosed? Um, I'm going to keep it to myself, but I have an idea of what I'm going to do. Okay, I don't know okay. if people are going to agree with it. Or... Well, if it works, it definitely is going to work for yourself there. Do you have anything else to add there, Sean? Is Sean gone? Andrew? I don't know. He's probably just decided to disconnect. I don't know. Um, anyway, I think we'll just we'll drag him down into the middle of the room just now and just let him do his bit get ready for the race. And it does seem that he is trying to restart his Xbox. Um, I want to try and get one more person in. We're on board right now with, I believe it is, Dan Taylor. Um, he's showing us offline on Discord. But I wonder if we tag him, will we be able to catch him? prior to qualifying. He's currently 13th at the moment. He's the number 85 of the stake big racing. The cars that we saw sitting together that look very similar. They are teammates for this season. So it'd be nice to get a little sit down and chat prior to qualifying. We've got a little bit of a wait time just now. Qualifying should pretty much start straight away, but I do want to get a quick chat even if he is out on track. We'll try we to get him. him. What was his name again? Dan Taylor. Uh, we will try to get that in. Go, go, go. Uh, I will just quickly tag him right now in the chat. As I have done now, as it does say, we have transferred over to qualification now. So this is where a lot of the drivers will uh, be focusing to try and get this good position as high up as they can. It seems to be quite a Ferrari dominant race just by the aspect we're currently looking at it in the pit lane. A few McLarens as well. The McLarens being one of the uh, least strong cars here actually, I believe. Obviously it's really good around aero, but I'm not sure what it is that makes it quite weak around this track. Obviously it's still one of the fastest cars around here being one of the next gen Evo cars. I'm not sure if we have 
any just older gen cars. Uh, if you could correct me on that, Andrew, that'd be good. I I'm do not actually sure what cars we, we have. We don't have any old gen cars in the race. It's mostly McLarens, BMWs, a couple of Fords, some Ferraris, and a few Lambos in the race today. There may be a couple of different other cars that have appeared. Um, I have got the list of teams and drivers here that I am going to actually list out just now, just before we go into qualifying. It might be a good idea to do so. Um, but out of your team's championship, we've got MK Motorsports, Kieran Evans and Ethan Hall taking that team together. They are driving the Ferrari. We were on board with Ethan Hall and also with Kieran Evans throughout qualifying. Actually, Kieran Evans just... Uh, well, sorry, Hall. Ethan Hall just next to us just now while we're watching Dan Taylor, hoping that he would understand that we're looking at him to try and join the comms box. Um, but we've also got Tipping out on the track as well. He's part of State Big Racing. So we'll just watch him as he's going through um, the complex to the start his qualifying. But UKS Racing driving the Mustang, Jordan Clifford and Jay Savage. We were watching Savage do his laps earlier and not be so successful in that car, but it does exist. It is a car in this game. Harry Hamilton for BMW Motorsports in the BMW M4. Uh, we've got Danzo Racing with Danny Felix in the M4. We've got CYN Racing with Chris Ruberg and Marcus Steindel in the Lamborghini. The Lamborghini. We've got the Golf McLaren Racing Team with Alex Sandwell and Liam Wright. And as you can understand by the name, they're driving the McLaren 720S Evo. Elevate Motorsports with Isaac Castillo and Braxton Portilla in the McLaren as well. British Racing Army. Um, give me one guess at what car they're driving without looking. What, me? Yeah. So, if they're... This is a pure educated guess. If they're a, a, a British team, I'm assuming they could be in the uh, McLaren by any chance? One more guess. Or have I just... One more guess, oh, I've and actually, then I've before it. I kicked you out, I'm going to kick you out of this comm box if you don't get it right. So that's one of the British, but I've, oh, Jaguar. There's no Jaguar, so it's right. It's an Aston, mate. Actually, that's it, you're getting yeeted. I've had enough. <laughs> you said there was no Astons in this race, mate. I didn't say there was <laughs> no Astons. Did. I didn't say there was yeah, no Astons. I will, oh, we will no, go no, back later. You can play back the tape, sir. But I guarantee I you right now, there the is... Tape. No Aston. There, there is an Aston. In this race. Uh, British Racing Green. Uh, surprisingly, with Tom Lynch, he's driving a Porsche. Um, I, I don't know why he's driving a Porsche. He's British Racing Green. Um, but here, you know, I'm not here to judge. Um, we've got Cin Cinder Idem from Lackluster Motorsports driving the McLaren. BB Racing with Ben Barnley. Barney? I was going to say Ben Barnsley. Uh, that's another real life racing driver. Kevin McKenty as well. They're driving the McLaren. We've got Kilra Racing with or K L R A racing I should say with Chris Dawes at the wheel of his Ferrari. Apex Racing with Anthony Perez driving the Porsche. We've got AI Racing with Ian McGowan and Aaron Myers driving the Ferrari. Stake Big Racing as we saw before with Dan Taylor and Conrad Tipping driving the Ferrari. THC Racing with Peter Marsden driving the McLaren. Lightning Racing with Gio... Gio Vadiel... Start again. Gio Vadiel Cordero driving the McLaren. Um, he is US and Portuguese, I believe. And we've also got another British Racing green team of Tom Lynch, but that's incorrect. He's already on the grid. He is there twice. But to finish everything off, team... We should just point out right now, our current pole sitter is Steindel in the Lamborghini. Now, the Lamborghini is extremely good around here. It's been known that the, that the McLaren is also pretty good around here, if you can get the right setup. But the Lamborghini, this is essentially, in many ways, where the Lamborghini itself, this type of car, the GT3 car, was born. These types of circuits are what makes the Lamborghini GT3. It's also what made the Murcielago GT1 and also the many iterations of Gallardo GT3 that came before, uh, after it as well. And he's currently just been outplaced by Barney by the BBR racing team. Um, and Alex Byers not having the best of time in qualifying in the moment. P14. 
13. Maybe a little comment on that. I don't. I don't want to comment on anyone's stuff just yet because I don't know who anyone actually is. Uh, obviously, not many people on the console side of stuff will actually know who I am. I, this is my first time doing uh, console commentary coverage, so it's going to be a bit different for me. All of these to be different. I'm not sure if he's trying to do a tire warm up there. That was a very aggressive tire warm up from Alex Myers, if that was some sort of tire warm up there, but that was definitely quite aggressive to say the least. But I, I'm not sure who he is, so I'm not sure what his pace range is going to be like, but it does seem you know these people quite a bit better than me. I, I wouldn't say I know them any better than you do, as Dan Taylor nearly sent it off the track. A good save from him. We've got it just a little bit wide out of that complex, and that has just not helped him at all, unfortunately. I think that's the end of that lap for him. Stake Big Racing not having the best start to today. Chris Tipping, however, Stake Big Racing once again. P8 at the moment. I would assume they are looking to try and get a little bit higher considering the circumstances that they are under. Um, Ethan Hall's still in the pits. He's still chilling there right now. Maybe he's sure that he can get a better lap in in the last 15 minutes of the race than well, the, the qualifying session. Well, as it stands right now, it's a long qualifying session. It is practically 50% race distance under qualifi well, qualification distance there. So that was a bit rowdy there, it does seem. Not sure who it was, I believe it might be the Porsche just off on the side there. Does seem a bit of a flashing here from the Ferrari 296 number 19. I believe it's Evans, I can't really see the it leaderboard that well for myself. A driver in front Evans. of him, uh, Portia, got a little bit blocked by, I think it was Tom Lynch going off the track at turn three to try and avoid the traffic, but wasn't fully off the track. So in many ways, maybe a Stewart's inquiry for that but it's, it's really early in qualifying I, I can't see people setting blistering lap times just now I think we're going to see it happen in the future um, as we see a couple of cars flying down the straight behind but Evans at the moment is currently sitting in a decent position in P6 he was saying prior to the race he wasn't as quick as he used to be when he was racing on his PlayStation, but now he's on Xbox. He's trying to almost relearn the cars and feel them a little bit better than, you know, the other time that he was racing on there. They are slightly different now. They've all changed these cars. The whole entire handling model is completely revamped over the past six months than what it used to be. And now, seeing Tom Lynch going across the line, he's going to start a flying lap just now. I think since we had a wee chat with him, we'll watch on board with him. Very, very tight apex there going through that section of the track. But we'll see if we can maybe get a good view. Cars are avoiding. The Mustang did go off the track to avoid any impeding. Tom Lynch, however, oh, getting a bit of a tank slapper on out the corner, and that's not what you need. In the situation where you're trying to improve your time, you do not want to be doing that. This car is notorious for it. it. Yeah, it does seem he's just abandoned his lap there. So I just want to quickly, if we could go back on Tom Lynch for a second, I believe he's in the original Porsche there. I think he's in the 911. Well, have a look. I, I think he is. by the back end. Yeah, he's in the 911. <laughs> he is. Uh, no, he's not in the 911. He's in the... Well, it is the 911, but it is not the very old one. It's not the 2018. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is, but compared to the 992, yeah, it's, it's still older. It's night and day in comparison nowadays. Um, yeah. The 992 is much better. He's getting tank slappers going into some of these high-speed corners. Maybe not having the ideal setup for that car. Now, he was touted to be one of the quickest on the grid, but I feel like he's hampered himself by driving this car. But we'll maybe see how he progresses throughout the end of this qualifying stage. We've got under 20 minutes to go, but I really do not see much coming from this man. But, you know, we don't I've, count our chickens before they've hatched. I've got a theory with him. Obviously, he had to restart his console earlier, and I'm wondering if he went in the wrong Porsche by accident if he hasn't noticed. Potentially, but he could he could actually just not own the newer DLCs that have the Porsche in it. That's what or that, could be. Yeah. 
Um, but we're, we're watching Clifford at the moment driving the Mustang, the 320 Mustang. Oh, Jesus. Bit of a tank slapper again for some of these guys, putting the power on a little bit too early out of that corner. Savage as well driving the Mustang. They're part of the same team, the UKS Racing. Uh, actually, I really like that livery. For being a basic livery, it actually looks clean and tidy. He does go off the track a little bit there. I think he is trying to avoid traffic at the moment. Um, Perez driving the 992. This is what the 992 should look like. I don't know why it done that. Uh, it's not the button I pressed. Uh, still trying to get used to this on Xbox. Never done comms before like this on Xbox. I wonder if it will let me hide the UI. Just now. It has. Oh my god. Fine. It wasn't letting me do it before. But we are watching a war with Perez. I wonder if we can maybe get a chat with Perez after qualifying. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Sure. I'll pick you for you. But uh, I'm not too sure people will do it just before the race, but you will come and try. Anyway, we've got just under 18 minutes left of the qualifying session. Um, and I thought it would be nice to have a little sit down and have a look at where we, we are right now and then we can reflect on, upon this. Maybe not so much at the end of the race, but maybe at the end of the season. And look at the grid that we have now, how stacked it is and how good the drivers are. And, and even in some cases how novice some of these boys are and maybe see how it shapes up over the rest of this season. Now, some of these boys have raced before and have raced in multiple other leagues, trying out a set of course of competizione for the first time. So, in many ways, this could be their very first league race on a set of course of competizione. So a completely different view from yourself and myself who have been around the Assetto course of competizione for the past few years and uh, seeing some of the best drivers in the world compete, I feel like we're, we're in for a show this season. I've been able to see so many drivers progress in ACC. I did a f bit of coaching, uh, I believe it might have been a few months ago now, uh, for a few of my friends who just joined, say, a course of competition after, well, practically going from absolute novice, just well, enjoying racing in real life but wanted to obviously take it a tiny bit further and they bought themselves a rig and a few of my friends they they were hopeless at the start of it shall I say we started at Monza for it uh, they were doing two minute odd lap times now they are probably about the 47s point now so they have been able to progress so much and being able to commentate uh, on ACC for now just coming up to a year uh, seeing the different ranges of competitivity the different fields I've been able to see from different leagues. You can definitely see uh, which cars are going to be better and which obviously being able to do the highly competitive races. You will have obviously the bot being one of the major factors. But when you're in semi-competitive lobbies, it's not going to be as big of an issue because you can still achieve uh, those lap times. And let's say one of the faster cars like the McLaren that will have that pre-applied bot compared to let's say the Mustang that won't have as much bop in fact I believe it might have negative bop uh, but it is just again it's not going to be that big of an issue having bop uh, in one of these servers having a fairly shall we say uh, mid to high-ish competitive range. A hundred percent and I think throughout my years of watching some cars and some drivers progress as well and different teams moving around especially in the competitive scene um, having the pleasure to actually race against the likes of Enzo Benito and other big names in the sport uh, with International Paddock's team, Team Alba 43, and actually managing to hold our own and then being able to commentate and watch some of the best racing go on in the world as well it makes me feel so much pride in, in being able to watch this and know that some of these guys could turn out to be the next Enzo Benito or the next big thing essentially at the time and some of these boys I guarantee you maybe six months ago probably didn't even see themselves driving a GT car and were just going to continue driving the same old Formula 1 and that's the difference these guys have given they've, they've put their hand into something different and they're you know they're giving it a go and that's to me 
the biggest compliment you can ever give anyone is, you know, giving something a go is actually better than being successful, in my opinion. Because so many people just stick their nose up and it's not to big and just say, oh, it's GT, it's got long racing. I don't want to do that. I want to race Formula One because I watch Formula One drive survive or I do this. And that doesn't interest me. Like, I will watch an F1 race and I will commentate it. But nothing brings me joy like watching the white bass down the camp on a big major turn or even just a small little open lobby in GT racing. It, you know, because you know that any car is going to make can make it out of that level. Like any car can be the car in front if they're free by the camp. And that's I think that's the way it goes. I don't think you can get that. I think one thing we have to appreciate as well is how big esports, especially now, obviously we're into sim racing, has seen how big it's been able to get recently over the past, I'm going to say decade, from when obviously AC was first launched. It became so much bigger than it originally was. We've seen, and going back to your point as well, some of the drivers probably not even touching an F1 game six months ago or just any sort of racing related game uh, a few months back. But what we don't know is some of these drivers might have the best potential to actually to well, see people progress potentially even to real life we've been able to see it with the names of james baldwin who have just did spa 24 hours uh, last weekend and his set yeah and his second time as well got to meet him in 2019 for it as well uh but it's just so incredible to see how drivers have been able to progress uh and i don't doubt that there might be a few people on this lobby that we're in tonight that in Probably a few months' time could be an SRO esports. I agree. If if they manage to impress enough and give it a go, then maybe even if they have a PC, you know, I'm not saying the Xbox is inferior, but even though it's got similar functionalities, the opportunities are no longer there for themselves. A lot of big organisations have given up um, on. Well, he's disconnected. That's a shame. Um, um, but I would argue nowadays that we're in a situation where so many stick their nose up at console players because they've seen the potential of having their race in the Japanese. Where I think this is not an opportunity to stick their nose up, it's an opportunity to sit there and actually watch and encourage and learn from these drivers. Drivers that are driving the race, but it's just, they may not have the same situation that you have in your life. And I will argue that a lot of people do view console players as scum. I will I will say that now. Uh, a big part of our community is considerably anti-console player because they think everyone drives on controllers and pads um, without actually realizing and finding out the person behind that maybe they can't afford a wheel like you have you know and that to me it, it grinds my gears as you can understand exactly and we have seen some of the fastest esports drivers came from uh, controllers as well so it just shows you that practically if you just put your mind to it you can eventually get there it might take time obviously obviously there's a uh, very good saying it's called the iceberg effect uh, which I've seen many, many times, and it's, related, it's just so relatable, and that's why, is there's just so little stuff that is actually visible, and all of the success, but all of the actual struggles, but underneath it, because obviously you can only see like 20% of an iceberg, uh, but also all of the 80% of the struggles underneath it that you won't actually see, uh, let's say, on socials and stuff, so it just shows you how much dedication you'll actually have to put in to do lots of stuff, well, stuff like that, and it does definitely pay off over time. 100% and the, the great thing is here we're watching drivers that again could be complete novices but we don't know. I specifically asked to not find out all these all the information that I would usually ask about a new commentary. Uh, I think I wanted to learn more about this as the race has progressed and you know be able to learn with these guys on, on how they're progressing throughout their season because I feel like someone could very easily say they're a novice but then two races in they are world championship material for this series mm. and i think to myself like are you really a novice i would rather learn from race one and know exactly who's going to come out the other end on top 
and be able to note down exactly who is to watch for the next race so that you guys get to also pick your winner because that's what I want. It's for you guys to understand that you guys can all win but you've got to pick it first. So we'll maybe have a wee bet on. How about that? A little bet. We're back now. <laughs> we'll bet. We haven't even done the first race. No, we'll, we'll bet. And, and just, just make it nice and clear. No money, no nothing. Because that's not how it works. But we'll make it very clear that you can choose who you want to win. And that's what we want. Um, Steindl, currently sitting P3 at the moment. We're sitting on board in his car as he's driving in the box. Can't seem to find a driver that's actually on a lap at the moment. Because this whole entire system of picking drivers is not working very well, it seems, in this game. So, we're sim oh, sorry, simulator. That is, uh, the uh, PC gamers would hate to say a uh, game. Um, anyway, very wide entry from Bloomberg into the ball hairpin, but he's now on the back straight. Now, just want you to watch how much curve he takes here on the exit. He's going to try and hug the outside line because he knows he needs to be on the outside to be able to make this corner worth it. Some drivers will completely cut the middle, the first middle sort of part of the track there because they can, um, as long as at least one of the cars can touch the, the tarmac essentially. And will accept their fate when it comes to that corner. Now that corner around that right-hander intersection three is extremely sketchy, especially if your car is suitable only for this section, uh, oh, for, for that section of track. If you're just going for top speed, you've got no way and uh, you're going to send it into the wall backwards and meet our good friend Barry R. We don't want that. We want to see these cars finish the race. So a few drivers testing their lines today. It does seem like Bloomberg might be on for a lap here. He's going very hard. Good pace on the exit of that corner. He's currently P8, as said previously. So he is in for an opportunity to increase his time. Good braking here. Stays to the outside. Tucks it nice and deep. Now, does he let the car run out? He does. The biggest, biggest error you can find on this track is people trying to trying to do that tactic and not letting the car run out with the tyres on the front wheels. They will try and fight you. Don't fight them. Just let the car run out wide and you'll keep up your pace. Tell them. That's how it works here. Now, coming into here, does he use more curve? He does touch the curve on the inside this time. You can see where people have been hitting it and running over. But you see, he's not trying to hit that next curve. He's trying to keep the car planted. I don't know if that's in or not. It's very close. And I think he's just, yeah, he's just invalidated and no more. You do want to keep that car ready to be able to react to those things. You do have to think about your braking. Um, he is going to come into the pits now. So Rupert not bad to improve on P8 currently. He's not got a lot of time left, however. Evans, he's out on track at the moment in his Ferrari. Let's see if we can change the camera view and get him chasing down a BMW. As it does look like he is trying to chase a lap time at the moment. Can he get into the top 10? For this race. Now, he goes at okay. 137.5. It's not a blisteringly fast lap time, but he is still managing quite well through these sections. Now, the Ferrari, as I said before, is not the fastest car in the world. Maybe got a little bit too much aero engine type. Would you agree? It, again, it's a car that. Uh, I like the tune. I want to like the 296, should I say. It's really good and it's really planted around most tracks. But when you go to tracks, especially Spa, when you go up a Rouge Radio, you, especially in ATC as well, I'm not sure if there's much of an effect in any other uh, sim, but you obviously have that really, really scary moment going through just the end part of Radio, but it's just a tiny bit of air goes underneath the car. It just shows you how planted and how much downforce this car obviously has. It works, though. Uh, obviously for the car itself the 296 being one of the uh, best cars in the GT grid w alongside the McLaren 720S Evo two of the best cars now that we see on the GT grid especially in ACC as well we have many examples of it of it being you could say quite overpowered we did see in 
uh, for example, especially at Spa, because I did, and I still remember this so well, I, I was uh, caught it on the Spa 24 hours, where, when I say I calculated uh, the percentage of how many cars were McLarens, and it came out to be 82% uh, of McLarens, which just shows you, and it's a 45 car grid, may I add, as well. Uh, so it just shows you how overpowered that the McLaren 120S Evo originally was when it first came out, obviously, the bar uh, and nothing was implemented soon after. Uh, but it definitely just shows you how overpowered these next gen Evo cars are compared to what we do see. Like, for example, the Aston and stuff like that, which is classed as a lower generation car. But obviously, we've just had a lot more time when it comes to having aero development, which is it's good. Uh, it does come for better racing, but it's also making the cars more fragile over time. But that's my boring part over aerodynamics done. I apologize. I would say, in many ways, we managed to fight the situation quite often at the top of the um, Now, I like to think that when it comes to spark, essentially, it doesn't matter about how good you are um, on the straights. I think, cool, no problem, we can be quick. I don't seem to care too much about that. I like how you manage the sector two and sector three. Fast corners. Even the slow ones at Spa, it makes a difference with the cars. And the Ferrari seems to do very well in those. It doesn't matter how quick it is in straight line. Now McGowan, 134 2 there. He is sitting in P5, but he does seem to be a few seconds quicker than the guys in the sort of the 10s from the 15s. But that does not mean, however, that that is fast or slow. We'll find out a little bit more about that very soon. As we are only two minutes away from the end of the qualifying. I want to see if I can find P1. He's sitting in the pits. He's just vibing there at the moment. Um, Barney, however, Mr. Barney in McLaren's number 72 car for BBR Racing is trying to do another fast lap. It would seem. Is very quick. We're all four from earlier. It's a little bit glitchy for us. We have to jump off. So we probably missed his uh, P2 lap time. But let's see. Does he take that corner okay? Does he try and set it up to get a good run here? Goes out. A 133 9. So we're seeing 133s be prevalent in the faster cars at the moment. I want to try and get the other thing. Yeah. I don't want to run the press of I'm trying to expand the left side of this game as well. It's not I want to see proximity. I want to see. It's obviously not going to work. Anyway, sit and watch as Barney goes through uh, with cars behind him <laughs> sort of going off the track um, I'm going to see what we're looking at right now in the middle of the pack uh, McKenty sitting in P6 there, I'm trying to see if I can get to him, but again it just randomly selects cars it seems, it's like people have joined the server that's what it is in the order um, which doesn't help me at all but here McKenty, P6 at the moment for Team BBR the two BBR cars doing quite well at the moment aces it do seem to be as well if you could just put it back into full screen mode, that would be greatly appreciated Sorry. but uh they do seem to be doing quite well both of them clarence and 20s which is kind of proving my theory wrong obviously it also i did have the theory about uh but not really mattering around uh this kind of average field of pace currently uh, but does seem the top three, I'm not sure how competitive they currently are, but a Lamborghini in the top three is brilliant to see, obviously, with the next gen uh, Lambo as well coming into play. It's just one of the best looking and best sounding cars on the grid as well. If you have had the opportunity of well, being able to hear GT3 cars in real life, you'll be able to say it's just such an iconic sound. It does just always sound like a Lamborghini, but we do now approach to the end of qualifying. This will be his last lap now. Uh, this will be the Lamborghini crossing the line, and that'll be the end of his qualification session. He is provisionally in P3. We might see some people jump up in positions here as we do see now. 
Uh, Tom Lynch going on for his final few corners. Can he improve? Currently P14. He hasn't been able to improve since after he was stayed one of the fastest drivers here, which I find a bit of a dramatic irony. But we do see now going through the final corner. He does take a quite wide, might be sacrificing a bit of his lap time. Goes across the line and he goes up one position now, previously P13. Can be an unlucky number for some there as we do see P1 still in the pit in the BMW, which is uh, probably a bit of a confident uh, thing to say the least as we do see now the McLaren 720s in P20 looking to potentially go into the top team numbers as we do now go into the final corner. Now it does break up the 50 board. That 50 board will probably go quite quickly throughout the race and that's going to be most people's breaking lines gone quite quickly now as he goes across the race across the race across the line going up into p17 that for himself so a bit of a good improvement there for himself definitely i mean paul there a 133.5 from mcmillan for kmr motorsports the number 37 car will be starting at the front of the grid barney in the number 72 mclaren only four temps behind and this is where it gets a little bit more bunched up now top six cars Roughly around about that second margin of pole position. Now, it's not expected for cars to be around about the same pace. Remember that all these cars are slightly different. And it's very cool to see that we've got three McLarens sitting in the top six at the moment. Now, they do have one mandatory pit stop that they have to complete in this race. It would be nice to see if we can catch up with league owner Kieran Evans to uh, have a wee chat the driver of the number 19 Ferrari of for this race driving for MK Motorsports Let's see if we can maybe get a chat with him so if he's about before that though we do have uh, one of the drivers you mentioned earlier oh, good. Anthony Perez here to see how is it going mate <laughs> hello there we go hello? Uh, how's it going so far oh man all I can say is uh, definitely come into realization there's a lot of competition in this race. And, uh, well, I mean, first race, first league that I've joined. So I'm definitely looking forward looking forward to uh, the competition in this race. But, hey, back of the grid doesn't mean I can finish last. So I'm going to give it my all this race and see where, you know, where, at least where my skills can take me. I love that energy. As well as that, you said this is your first well, potentially first league race and your first race with these people. It does mean you don't know how these drivers are going to act. Obviously, you have that mandatory pit stop, which could be an advantage, but can also be a disadvantage for you going throughout the race. Do you have any sort, well, if you can disclose, do you know what you're going to do with your pit stop? Yeah, just keep it short, sweet, and quick. That's the best thing I can do, you know, here at this point it seems that my strategy is the going to play a pretty big key component into you know moving up in the grid so you know like i said once we get to that mm. point of pit stop i'm gonna have to just really come to i guess my sense of what's the best strategy to take forward and finally obviously it's now a race there's still plenty of time to get moves and stuff done where would you like to end up not trying to jinx you obviously where would you like to end up throughout the end of the race that's a good question um what i'm gonna do is just keep my head down compete and wherever i can end up is all i can say top 10 obviously is a goal and especially starting in this grid with really good competition on the field you know all i can hope for is letting my skill and determination move me up in the grid Brilliant to chat to you. Good luck for the race. You still have 43 seconds to chill out. I hope you have a great race and very best wishes for you. Thank you. appreciate Thank you. it. That was Anthony Perez, one of the drivers here for tonight. We did have Kieran here a second ago. I'm not sure if he wants to come back in. He's just had to hop off and there. get ready for the race, unfortunately. But we'll maybe try and catch him at the end of the race and find out how the race went from his point of view. Now, it is time for us to jump and get ready for, essentially, a rolling start. Now, it's not a full lap. It is literally the last corner, and then we go, I believe. So we're pretty much going straight into the action, ready for what will be considered as 
a moment of history for VGT as they take on the racing of Misano for the first time in their championship. Kieran McKenty starting P6 as previously explained. I don't know why it does this where I can't get onto the P1 car. Please, please, please give me the P1 car. Right, we'll, we'll have to just sit with this just now. A couple of cars getting early drive throughs for speeding on the start, but that is not important right now. We are watching as we start this race. We're on board with IDEM as we are watching the front four cars, I believe. Um, take the first few corners. Now, into this complex, you've got to watch. A few people will try and send it here, but we're going to see, as we go down the grid, a few positions. We've got Savage. He started quite well today, getting a drive through for him. That's not not a good start to the race, Aces. It's definitely not. It's, we have seen it's been quite calm. I'm not going to jinx it just yet, touch wood. But it has been quite calm, or well, relatively calm, for the top four so far. No one's pulled anything crazy. I think everyone has the same mentality here. Just trying to stay in the race is all you can ask for at this point. We did see well, what I saw uh, going into turn one. I saw a car spinning, so it doesn't seem it's going to be the same for the back of the grid as we go into one of them. Claren now into P9. It does seem we might lose the position here too. I believe it's Hall in the 25. Ferrari 296, a bit of the flashing of the lights, that's not really necessary because you're both fighting for position there as we go on board without with Bodes in P24. Unfortunately, one of the cars I believe might have been involved with a spin at the early parts of the race I was seeing as well as that. Now as we change drivers once again, as we do see now, it's going to be the Mustangs. We do see there's going to be a side to side, side there between the McLaren and the Ferrari there. It does seem they're going to squeeze each other a tiny bit wide there. Mustang trying to get involved as well. As you have McLaren looking for scraps for any of this battle. It's now going through the final corner for the first time. It doesn't seem there's going to be any sort of moves to go just yet. No, definitely. Cordero not having the best starts, to say the least. It does look like the, McLa the Mustang in front of him has had contact to the back of his diffuser. And a little bit of contact there as he was trying to get past. But to be honest, he was very slow through that apex. So... Maybe a little bit of a miscalculation. He did get out of the way eventually, but um, yeah, that car looks pretty beat up already, and I can't see that being fixed early on. That's going to have to be a pit stop later on in the race. Another driver that's got a drive through is Lewis Wright. He's not managed to start very well. Um, speeding on the start, unfortunately, doesn't help you in this type of race, and so he is going to have to serve that drive through very soon. It's about three laps you get. Uh, McKenty dropping a position early on to, it seems like Alex is getting a fantastic start in the AI Racing Ferrari, the number 93 car, flying quite early on. Uh, number 50 clearing his drive through, so a few drivers in the pit at the moment, which is good. It's good to see a few drivers manage to get those out of the way, because it's a hefty penalty to uh, not surf your drive through. I think it's disqualification, isn't it? It is. ACC. It's one of the only game. It's one of the only games that actually provides a uh, disqualification for that type of penalty. Usually they would just match it. We do have an exception on this game. If it is before the final three laps, you don't have to serve it, but you'll be given a hefty 180 second penalty, which is uh, just as worse as serving this penalty. It is, believe it or not, one of the largest pit lanes in the game for one of the shortest tracks in the game, which uh, seems a bit ironic, but it is. I'm not sure how long it is, the pit stop, uh, entirely, but it is definitely more than 45 seconds from start to finish, so it is going to take so much time out there as we do see. It's starting to come down a tiny bit there as we are on board, once again, with the 83 Lamborghini, as it does just go down a tiny bit to see if there's any sort of battle starting to occur here. It's the same two uh, competitors here as we do see. It's going to be the 19 Ferrari 296 as well as the 7. McLaren here, both of these cars now five minutes in. It does seem the McLaren seems to be a tiny bit faster at this moment of time, but he doesn't seem to be as consistent as his Ferrari. He does look to go for some sort of move now going into turn five. He goes side by side here that we do see now. The Ferrari will have the advantage going into turn six, having the inside line into this very, very steep angled corner, but it doesn't seem there's going to be any sort of retaliation yet by the McLaren as they stay in the same position now. But it oh, do big seems spin. to be side by side again. It does They're look like Sandwell's uh, gone round days. behind. Uh, he's, he's doing a little bit that. of an excursion to return to the track, but he's going to be considerably slower going down that straight now. 
Oh, big battle. He's going to go try and lunge down the inside. He he actually looked there, and I think that maybe caught Kieran off guard. He's had to go off track to try and keep his position. So I think that's going to be a situation where potentially the stewards might inquire about that. And maybe a bit of contact towards that. We didn't see it, but the stewards might get involved in that one. Pit window is now open. For those of you that are watching that are drivers and haven't read the information, um, or those of you that just want to find out why the pit window is open five minutes into the race and not straight away, is quite simply, it's five minutes from the start of the race and five minutes to the end of the race that the pit window is open. It's to try and stop drivers from serving their pit stops within that last five minutes. Because, I mean, have fun trying to do it around this track with your tyres and trying to manage your fuel. But in terms of trying to get through your pit stop, it's very important that we do this. It looks like there's a bit of a debacle going on between MK Motorsports drivers at the moment. Um, oh, bit of contact at the back. Oh, no, that's going to be some swears going on, I think. Um, Ethan Hall, a little bit impatient with Kieran Evans through there, to say the least. Um, causing both of them a little bit of contact in the car, so they're going to probably repair that in the pit stop. If they're smart enough, they won't, if it's not affecting the car, but we don't know that just yet. Bit of contact to the back of Dan Taylor's Ferrari. Um, that was just a lucky chance to see that now. Um, down in P18, this take big racing car looks well and truly beaten up early on in this race. It's not even 10 minutes gone and that car looks like it's at the end of a 24 hour race. Aces. It's it's not the hope and dreams they were looking for for their first race unfortunately. For them as we see that is going to be a McLaren off there. That seems to be the number 5 McLaren just going off into the penultimate turning. That doesn't seem he's going to be quite respectful with traffic though. That might also be a bit of a steward inquiry uh, towards uh, obviously being Post-race uh, stewards. Oh my days, sorry. Post-race stewarding instead of live race stewarding it can be better because it obviously gives the stewards more time to look at the penalties and obviously to make it more just of... Oh my days, sorry. You're going to have to take over a second to get that <laughs> <out of> coffee. <laughs> uh, Chris Tipping. Now, in the number 67 Ferrari, he's had a pretty safe run, it seems. Car doesn't look too beat up early on in the race, so he's kept the car clean and tidy. Uh, he's currently running P10 for Stake Pig Racing. His teammate not being so lucky. Uh, I was trying to find them down the grid, but it does seem that we managed to find Chris and his car. Uh, yeah, not to say that there is an opportunity here that's building. It does look like Hamilton is a little bit slower than tipping, so we could see an overtake building up. Now, we saw Harry Hamilton early on in the qualifying session. Uh, but we haven't seen him since. We've not really seen much from the BMWs, to say the least. Both both of them uh, qualifying, well, the BMWs that are in the race, qualifying reasonably high up the grid. Um, we actually had a BMW on pole here today. So, yeah, actually, in saying the speed differential, it does actually, like Chris Tipping, is actually considerably slower now. That's not ideal, five tenths slower. He's lost a bit of time there. I'll jump down the grid a little bit, see if there's any battles developing. Ian McGowan still on his conquest to get into the top three. It's going to be a big ask early on in the race, but as you know, if you have watched a GT race before, you will know that anything can happen, especially in an hour-long race. You can see the pole sitter be absolutely screwed over in a pit stop phase, or even be completely and well and truly world-ended by a back marker to just let that second, third and fourth go through and then battle for the lead, because that tends to be what happens early on in championships, but hopefully it doesn't happen here today. They do seem pretty respectful, a little bit of learning from the drivers as you can see here and do you know, I think we might see a move here, McGowan very close to the back of it, Edem now. I don't see much in the way of 
contention at the moment, unless Eden makes a mistake. They are very similarly matched, but this lap has been a stormer for McGowan. His teammate behind, Alex Myers, has made his way up the grid by one spot. McKenty losing out on that one. And to be honest, again, big gaps in that lap time from the bottom, uh, from the bottom of my leaderboard right now. There's a little bit of pace disparity going on. Now, just watching as McGowan is very close to the back of Eden. Can we see this move happen on the straight? At the end of the straight, it's going to be all or nothing. He is 0.5 behind. This is his opportunity to set up the move for the long straight. Can he try and just be a little bit later on the brakes through here and get the car alongside for the next corner? You can see the downforce in both of these cars are very similar and they work in a similar way. They're both mid-engine cars. They both generate a high level of downforce through their bodywork and they all are very much turbocharged now. The only difference is the Ferrari is a V6 engine and the McLaren is a V8 turbocharged engine. So that you can work out for yourself. And a funny fact for you that you may not know that the Ferrari 296 actually has the F2 Dallara engine in it. So, there you go. It's just twin turboed rather than single turboed for F2. Um, the, instead of Sean now, I'm naming you Walking Encyclopedia. I am. <laughs> I am Walking Encyclopedia. Now, Ian McGowan, he tried to make the move prior, but it does seem that I did manage to get a decent lap time. They are very similar at the moment. Myers also only four times back on that lap, so he's he is dropping back a tiny bit, maybe acting as that buffer between him and Ruberg, but Ruberg six seconds back from this battle now. I would say that McKenty's dropped back by one, and Ruberg is in a situation now where he either needs to think about the long run, holding position, or try and push and see how long his tyres last. Would you say that's fair? 100 percent we're not too sure well i'm not too sure you might know what the track temperature is but misano in general is just a killer for tires but when, when you start increasing that track temperature it but does seem to be 35 degrees as displayed on the top right right now so that is such a hot track uh for these cars it's only an hour so you don't you well, really need to change for tires as you if you wanted to you can uh, you're at the point where you're probably losing more time if you're going for tire tires in an hour race uh, instead of just going for fuel it's down to really fuel obviously you have that much key pit stop i'm not sure what the uh, regulations upon it is but if it is just for fuel usually people will have uh two mindsets to it pit halfway and take half and half of fuel or you would splash and dash at the end but you would take all of your fuel now which does obviously decrease your pit stop time but it will increase your lap times over time uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if many people are doing that splash and dash effect. I assume most of these people will be doing that half and half effect looking at the lap times. Uh, it does seem they are decreasing now because of the tyres, obviously. Starting to die off now as, as well as the pace. And we do start seeing quite significant gaps starting to appear. It does give the drivers a break, but when we do have the first round of pit stops, it does make stuff ever so close up. Because we do see now five. another drive through for oh, no. car number five. That's one thing we didn't mention is track limits. Uh, this is such a strict track when it comes to track limits. Every corner uh, has practically a cuttable edge for it. And it is just free track limits for an hour it can be a bit of a push. Uh, I don't know if that's just me and my skill, but it's just, it can be difficult. Especially around here, I think because it's a motorcycle track, it's similar to Ricardo Torbo uh, from Valencia. That it's designed for a motorcycle to go off the track and go wide, but essentially still manages the driver to keep his balance and stay on, stay on his bike. So you can see that, you can see the extra painted layer on the outside of the track here. It's, it's marking track limits for your bikes. It's not necessarily marking it for the cars, but that thick white line that you're seeing before the curbs is your track limits on a lot of the corners. Now, if you can keep your car at least within that white light to a percentage you are going to be fine now this is the only corner that that track limit does not apply i believe i think in many ways your rumble strip around here is 
part of the track. And now that's a good thing for a lot of these drivers because I feel like that's how, in many ways, racing should be. As Idems went off the side of the track there, he's lost the back end and he has completely sent it. And I think that means now Ian McGowan and Alex Myers are in P4 and P5 in this race. So that leaves Barney, Steindale and Alex Myers in that position. KMR Motorsports in the lead at the moment. The lead car. I am, I'm trying to get to him, but I can't seem to be able to navigate it. Is Kevin McMillan in the KMR Motorsports BMW? He is just up the road, but again, you know, the, the fantastic nature of this game allows me to do anything um, is interesting because McMillan, we talk about him in qualifying, he qualified P1, he was on pole and he's pretty much walking away. Now, he was four times quicker in qualifying, maybe he needs a BOP, but in terms of the racing he's producing so far, he's four seconds, four and a half seconds ahead of Barney in P2. Idem's managed to get going perfectly fine. Uh, we'll maybe watch and see if he's got any damage, but uh, continue your honour with Kevin McMillan. He, he is the man to watch here. He has the opportunity to do something great today, and that is win the first VGT World Challenge race. So, do you think that we've got an opportunity to see him fl flourish today? Obviously, I don't want to commentate his curse anymore because it's the worst feeling ever when you commentate his curse driver. It just shows you how much power we actually have. Yes. Uh, but looking at his pace, but we also see, again, some of the other drivers as well having quite a similar pace. It does still make it quite unpredictable. And obviously what we saw earlier, one of the McLaren spinning it and still 43 minutes left to go, it just makes every result so unpredictable. We've seen it before in many different racing series. Uh, just how unpredictable most sports can be because you could at any point even though it's very very rare in ACC but you can have a full on puncture uh, you can run out of fuel if you have uh, obviously miscalculated it and you could just have an absolutely scorching crash or even a penalty as well which will all just affect your result at the end of it but he has a good chance to win it and it will definitely extend his championship lead from round one going into round two for starting, I believe, is it next week or is it the week two, after? Two weeks from now. Uh, we will we will continue on with our world conquest then in two weeks time. But Barney, however, P2, we managed to actually get to him this time without having to fight through multiple cars. And um, we didn't see any real damage going on to the number 51 car, which is good means he's managed to keep the car out of the wall and keep racing so there is an opportunity for him to keep going we are meeting some back markers now which is going to be an extra added challenge for some of these drivers now the thing is about blue flag rules in gt um, the blue flag driver doesn't have to get out of your way thankfully enough um, they can actually stay on the racing line it's actually better for you to stay on the racing line because the faster car has to find a safe and passable way around you without causing you or them an incident. And if you do crash into them and you are the faster driver and you're found at fault, it can be a very hefty penalty in many instances. Because in terms of your pace to theirs, you're the one that should be avoiding the incident, not them. And another car now on the track avoiding... Um, many confrontations but he does try and pull out the way a bit of a, a weave he's lucky that those cars behind weren't closer trying to stay out of their way now i think there is a blue flag rule in regulations for this league but someone could very happily confirm that to me that'd be fantastic just so that i know that for future references kevin mcmillan now 6.1 seconds ahead of barney Hope is lost at the moment in the first 20 minutes of this race for P1, but the battle is still on for the final steps of the podium. Barney now in a position where he is in P2, Steindl in P3. Alex Myers now in P4 as it does seem like his teammate has hit the pits as well as him. Um, I'm trying to try and see if I can find his teammate, because his teammate I believe did make his pit stop. If not, he's hit the wall or crashed or disconnected. 
Um, I'm trying to see, is there anyone that has actually done their mandatory? There is a few cars that have pitted early, but everyone seems to have not serve their mandatory stop time. Marsden... Bear in mind, everyone who has been in the pit have done their pit before the pit window opens because of their damage. So that is just a cruel uh, thing that they've put on the, st uh, on the uh, server. I'm not sure if it was intentional, but it was a bit cruel, I would say, putting the uh, pit window time five minutes after the, st well, the starting lap. So it does make it a bit more interesting because they do have to do an extra pit stop now instead of uh, obviously serving their mandatory pit stop at the start of the race when they could repair their damage. But now they have to do a second pit stop for all of that. Well, in terms of like British GC rules, it's very similar to what they run. Their it pit is, window yeah. closes um, and opens five minutes before, um, five minutes after race start and five minutes before race end. So, if you haven't served your pit stop prior to that, I think it's actually it depends. I think it's actually ten minutes. So you've actually got to be out on track for ten minutes. You know, even if you do have damage, you have still got to try and race unless you're being ball flagged in. If you get what I mean, you've got a mechanical defect affects your performance and other cars around you so um, I think in terms of that we're going to see some proper racing start happening now as Ruberg as we're watching now is catching McGowan. McGowan was a bit slower I wonder if he maybe had contact with another car while we were watching others because in terms of his racing it could be different I've seen Perez has served his pit stop early on in the race it is sort of around about that time now where you'd want to maybe if you started off the race you fueled your car light and you're going to aim for that first 20 minutes and then fuel the car for the rest or you just decided I'll get my pitch stop done early and just fill up to make sure I get to the end. Now my argument has always been that it's, I feel like it's always better to overfuel and try and do the first 40 minutes than under for the first 20 minutes of the race now. Because I feel like you can get a better feel of where you are on the track and your pace when you've got more weight. And if you've got more weight than you are, that's how it goes. If you've got a fuel, make sure you've got a target window that you've got to race for, because it is a sprint race. Um, yes, an hour is a sprint race. Um, and got to be careful and watch because I just magically appeared on Steindl's car again so now Steindl still running P3 at the moment in his Lamborghini the Lamborghini it's a very nice livery shiny um, CYN racing at the moment being he's the only car in the top 10 for them I believe he's the only car actually racing for CYN racing is he that's actually here tonight I think you're right. I couldn't see any other car no, on the grid. He, he might be an independent. No, Chris Ruberg's also racing for them. That's a lie. He is in P7. Apology. I think they're the only team running Lamborghini in this championship. So, you know, a lone Lamborghini effort, not sharing setups, could be outnumbered by those that are in the McLarens and then the Ferraris, but they seem to be doing quite well for their first outing. Does seem so. Grid. I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to work out this system because it seems to just randomly generate who I'm going to. So I think it's in joining order that they're um, that this works in. So uh, Sandwell up into P16. He was further down the grid, but obviously cars around him have started to fall apart as well as his car. As you can see by the scuffs in the sides there. Uh, he's tried to go for the golf racing livery, and I respect that, but I think that colour is just a bit too bright <laughs> to make mm. it golf, golf racing blue, unfortunately. Um, I think it's the same with the orange. The orange is a bit off as well. Ghost racing, sky, skating across there. Uh, again, magically I've been put on another car, Kieran Heavens. Um, watching on board. Now, P12 for him. He was farther up the grid in terms of positions. He's, he's managed to work his way down now. P12. So, the cars around him still needing to make their stops. Maybe we're going to see the 30 minute mark be where a lot of drivers make their stops, aces. Because I think some of these guys 
they're smart enough to uh, to not make their stops early. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I think one thing, as we already see the, the Ferrari going into the pits, as we also see Perez has done his pit stop as well. Uh, so we do start seeing a few of the pit stops starting to happen. It's a bit early, in my opinion. It should be around the 30 minute mark. It's got a bit of a battle of the main straight apologies, side, you know. aces. Uh, Ethan Hall and Jordan Clifford having a bit of a battle here. It does look like the Mustang muscling them out. But I'm telling you, Hall is trying his hardest. Now, obviously, their positions are not representative to where they are on the grid at the moment. He's going to try for the lunge down the inside. He's pushed him wide a little bit there. That was a fantastic move from Ethan Hall. He stuck his car where he thought it belonged. Didn't make contact with the Mustang. The Mustang respected he was there and had to go wide. And there we go. The Mustang's trying again. He's really thinking about it. But he's going to have to wait. He's got a big, big, long straight to think about another move on Ethan Hall. He even thought about it there, trying to get a shortcut. He's going to try that torque on that V8 motor in the Ford, trying to pull him along. But I don't think it's enough at the moment. It's about the launch. Can Ethan Hall get the launch out of this corner and be able to fend off the attack from Clifford behind? He's really trying. He's going to try and go around the outside here. It's a bit of a dangerous move. He's getting pushed off the track again. He's really pushing. Now, Ethan Hall got to hold his car through here. Make sure he goes off track again. Both of those cars have done that today. Both of the MK Motorsports cars. And there's a little bit of argy-bargy. I think it's about trying to understand where that other car is on track. But then... The Mustang is now in front. Hall's going into the pits now. He's realised that it's time for him to make his pit stop. But a fantastic battle, to say the least, between the number 320 and the 25 car. Now, it's all going to be down to strategy for him. Now, is he going to try to do some sort of undercut here and try to defend his position? Or is he going to, unfortunately, bottle it, which we do see quite a bit more than you would expect. Now, as we do see the majority of the pits starting to pit now as we... It does seem like 83 so has picked up a stop point. goal plus 30 for speeding in the pit lane. So that actually is your man, Ethan Hall. He has made a mistake going into the pit lane there. And it's going to cost him a stop goal. So he's now out of the running for that race. Uh, that, that coveted points that they so, so want sometimes can slip away just as quick as that. And a few cars now picking, making pit stops around about the 30 minute mark. Um, as predicted, Tom Lynch in the pits, so is Marsden again. Barney in the pits, Ethan Hall still in the pits. Number 25 car, sorry. Number 83, who was 83? That is the question. It does look like it was Steindl. Steindl, the car that was running P3, has actually made a massive error, a strategic error. A stop goal plus 30 now puts him out of the running for the lead. And that has well and truly screwed him. I was going to say, 83 does not sound like the 25 car, and uh, it does seem like he's managed to uh, completely screw that up for Steindl. But Ethan Hall's still in the running for a good position now. Uh, number 11, drive through for speeding into the pit lane. Uh, number drive through for track limits for the 777 car. And Perez, we're watching him now. He's, he's uh, made his pit stop, and he's looking to climb in the 992 Porsche. Again, I will mention what I said earlier, how unpredictable motorsport can be as we see so many uh, penalties applying now to people's cars. That stop go 30, as you mentioned, as well as that drive through on the 777 McLaren as we are on board now with the BMW M4, who is your leader. Now the number 37 BMW M4, not having many sort of pressure moments so far. He has created such a big gap for himself so far. And is it going to be the same for the entire of the season though because obviously it is going to be the summer bumps now this is where we will start seeing uh, a lot of the drivers having outages due to holidays and stuff like that and that is what's going to cause championships to fluctuate over time because we might see the bmw m4 who's currently in the lead right now only be in for one race or he could be in for the entire season if so he could dominate this entire season that's mckenty now finished his stop go oh, sorry his drive through he's gonna have to come back in the pits again for fuel and tires it would seem or at least a minimum of fuel so the triple seven car managing to get his
drive through out of the way. Now he actually has to think about his stop. He was running quite high up the grid at one point in this race. He started off in P6. He's down to P14 now after that drive through. He was, I think, about P8 prior to his drive through. So losing a lot of time there, unfortunately. Marsden's still in the pits. I believe he's probably disconnected and had enough, unfortunately. But Steindl now serving his stop goal 30. Chris Ruberg out on track, the only other CIN car, CYN, apologies, still essentially in the running for some big, big points. Now, the number 21 car, again, started reasonably high up the grid in terms of positions, and he's battling in those positions just now. Only the few cars around him, there is a few out on track that have served their stops, Alex Myers being one of them, he is four seconds ahead, but it does look like Dan Taylor is trying to defend this position as much as he can, he knows he's still got a pit stop to do, but can Ruberg make this stick, he's got an opportunity to set up the move now, down the straight he gets a fantastic run on Dan Taylor, can he make the move around the outside here, he's thinking about it, it's not enough, and try and get out of the dirty air throughout the corner. Can he get the switch? He's going to try the inside line now. Can Dan Taylor cover him off? He does cover him off here. Pushes Ruberg wide through the hairpin. It's kind of like an oblong hairpin because it doesn't act like a normal hairpin in terms of your track position. Ruberg now right up the back side of Dan Taylor. There's only a 100th in between these guys now. Can we see the difference go on? Oh my god, big accident! Ruberg oh gets my. completely killed by Dan Taylor as he goes off the track. He completely makes a mess of it. It looks like Dan Taylor sort of lost the back end. Oh, this guy's vertical there. Yeah. Just probably one of the biggest accidents I've seen in ACC. For quite a while there as he does see I'm not sure if that's the same Lamborghini but he has recovered if he's going to go into the pits no he is not he's going to stay out uh, for the time being now from south still in P10 though but for how long I'm not sure how much damage he has sustained if this is the same yeah this is the same car it doesn't seem he has that much damage he does seem to have a tiny bit of damage to the front of his car but it doesn't look well, anywhere near as bad as what it should be I think it may flatter uh, the opportunity here because I think it has sort of screwed him over a little bit. He's obviously made his pit stop, so if he wants this position, he's going to have to carry that damage to the end of the race, and I think that, that could be quite significant aero damage to the front of that car. It looks like that bonnet is holding on for dear life, and the front of that has seen better days, and unfortunately... I wish ACC modelled damage a little bit better because I feel yeah. like that car, you know, the whole inside, whole inside of the car would have been impacted considerably as well. And I think we would have had a, a retirement there from both cars. I, I think, from what I saw, I didn't see the full incident because all I saw was the Ferrari go off. It was that the Ferrari lost the back end or turned in too early, completely misjudged the corner and ended up hitting Ruberg off with him. But it'd be interesting to see the stewards' reports come out on that because I think that's going to be quite a hefty one if it's deemed intentional or avoidable. A hundred percent. But he is still going. Uh, actually, he has updated four P thirteen now. Obviously, as you were saying, Steindale now. Sorry, I just well. hopped on to Steindale because he's uh, he's the other CIM oh, car. I see. CIM car so number eighty three screwed himself over. It. In, uh, in terms of getting a stop goal plus 30 in the last time he was going into the pits. Um, so he's had to serve that, he's dropped down. Um, but yeah, a little bit of tension building up on track potentially for these guys. Would you say it's too late for for late changes now? You've got 26 minutes into this uh, to go into this race now. And some of these guys picking up that damage after their pit stop do you think they're just going to have to carry that on? 26 minutes, roughly, is about 13 laps. Roughly. Uh, there is still so much time left to go. We have just breached the halfway mark of this race so far. 
and we have seen just in that well was now 35 minutes of racing we have seen so much more well, interesting and unpredictable moments like obviously what we just saw earlier with a car almost going vertical uh but it just shows you there is still time for many unpredictable moments to happen and we could see potentially this is quite unrealistic but we could see one of the running members of probably in the mid uh, field potentially get closer to the podium than you think if anything bad were to happen that's obviously a worst case scenario but anything uh, could happen i'm not going to jinx anyone because obviously that's unfair towards that one person but there is still plenty of time as we are now on board with the 19th for a he has no pressure on himself just yet he is trying to click well creep closer to the 83 uh lamborghini who obviously sustained all of that damage earlier as well as we can see now the leader behind him obviously with going through traffic he is probably pretty experienced with it but with going into a new league like fgt which is going on for their first season it's going to be a bit difficult uh just trying to predict how traffic is going to act with this because there's going to be people who are going to be experienced and there's going to be people who are again as we said earlier people who haven't actually touched acc or potentially a racing game ever before 100 percent, and these guys are going to learn one way or the other it's a bit of a trial by fire. Um, learning yeah. how to drive these cars is a trial by fire. Uh, but I find that if you learn how to drive a GT car, you can drive any type of racing car. I think they're so... I think in terms of their weight category, they are similar to a general road-going car. So in terms of being able to handle this with the aero similar to an F3 car, means that you could probably jump into an F3 car, learn what's to do with a, with, you know, you can't trail break as much because if you do, your back end's going to swap ends on you, and that's it, it's over. But learning the differences between these cars, and learning how to control that weight, learning track limits, learning where your car needs to be on track to make the most out of the engine is completely, it, it's, it can be learned considerably from learning to drive a GT car and this is what these guys are learning today you know it doesn't matter if you come from a different background in racing a GT car is a completely different animal but if you learn how to drive it and you know how to tame it I'll tell you now you're set for life because this is what's taught me how to rally drive it's taught me how to you know essentially drive an F1 car fast I took time off of F1 to drive ACC for a year and I came back and I was tremendously quicker and that could just be down to my knowledge learning how to drive the cars, learning how to be quick in a car, but I will always put it down to a very slow car there, Sandwell just sitting on the outside of the apex, a bit dangerous, but sure, that's where you want to stop. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see a battle appear again between Ethan Hall and Clifford. It does seem that Ethan managed to get out and get going ahead of Clifford, but Clifford's caught up again. It does seem, as you obviously say, GT cars, compared to F1 cars, yes, there is 100% a big difference with it. TR, obviously, with the uh, obviously the electronic assist, like TC and ABS that we do have, compared to what you will have on, let's just say, an F1 car, for an example, there is going to be differences, but what you say, Andrew, is pretty much bang on. It is a great car to begin with, and it is one of the most competitive in terms of racing as well. You see some of the best racing, uh, in any sort of competitive field or non-competitive field even i think one thing that has to go up with this in terms of uh the racing ability and just the best racing is going to be v8 supercars those and gt cars provide the best racing because they can actually tolerate a bit of damage uh just because of how well, road like is we'd see an example right there the ford mustang just unfortunately rear-ending uh, now the Ferrari just could give him a tiny bit of damage as we go closer and closer to 20 minute mark left of this race. It does seem he wants to try to get this position as quickly, uh, well, wants to get this position uh, done as quickly as he can, as well as we can see. Obviously that was slow McLaren that we saw earlier, but we now see Hall just trying to defend. But will he be able to defend this for 21 minutes? I'm not sure he can. It's going to be a bit of a task, but you never say never. I agree with your statement with... Uh V8 supercars and, and touring cars in general, I think they can oh, I didn't tolerate. Say it, yeah. they, they do tolerate the extra level of contact. And I will say this now, and I always will: no matter what you do, you've got to give them a go. It doesn't matter if you, you've just learned to drive an F1 car. Cool. F1's different. 
this is different. Everything is different. Give it a go. And I actually, my only ever championship that I ever won was in V8 Supercars. And I oh, did wow. that all prior to learning F1 cars and everything. But it was a completely different animal, learning to drive those cars. And I can tell you now, I'm completely different to the way I am. It was a rookie series of V8 Supercars where I had. But I had such a good time learning how to control something that under my feet, in terms of simulation value, I had six, I had 550 brake horsepower with no traction control that wanted to kill me at every opportunity I put my foot down. But being able to learn to drive that and getting my first ever race win at Bathurst of all places was consider considerably enjoyable for me. So um, we're seeing a bit of a scramble behind Clifford, Wright and Hall all battling for the same position on the track. And, uh, well, Wright's going to have to peel into the pits in the next few laps because he does have a drive through, as uh, saw at oh, the end of last yeah. lap. Um, oh, big, big off for Clifford. That's going to cost him a bit of time on Hall. But again, the pressure from Wright behind definitely didn't help him. Wright is definitely a controller player, as you can see by the sort of fast tap movements. Uh, maybe not the most ideal way to drive a GT car. I think you've got to be a little bit smoother than that. Um, God, he's all over the shop. Um, but obviously it's a learning experience for all of these guys. A little bit of side-by-side -side action there as Wright is definitely quicker than Hall going down the straights. Again, he's got damage to his car. That's definitely impeding him. And... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to see some big changes in the next few laps. I think you're 100% right. And it's, again, back to my point that even though we had half an hour left earlier, it's still enough time to provide some of the best racing you could see. Here is now we do go on board with P5, who is creeping ever so closer to P4. Now 4.7 seconds between the two drivers is slowly decreasing now as we go towards the end of sector one sector one being the most complex uh, sector here at misano having some of the tightest corners you can get especially with that corner now which i believe is turn three there could be turn four turn three turn four with the track limits and the sausage curb on the exit can be absolutely brutal uh, and can get pretty much everyone i think this is one of the uh, tracks as well that has the bug where it can accidentally give you two track limits uh, in one corner and it's one of the only tracks along with Imola as well that can do it so it's just one of the you know, another aspect of having to be caught uh, cautious with it 100% and you've got to avoid the track limits as much as possible use them where you can but I think in terms of trying to be quick you do need to sort of get right to the edge but when it comes to it I will always argue the point that it doesn't matter really doesn't matter because like, you can really abuse them through here as long as you don't completely abuse them and run over those curves um, like the sausage curves too much you're gonna find yourself in a better position out in the corners it's, it's all situational because some curves like this one you do want to be over uh, but don't try and take them too early like Clifford did because that's unfortunately not the ideal line and he's actually having to give way to the P2 of Ben Barney there because I think that's sort of where he's sitting is in that lead battle now um, but yeah Savage his teammate is down at P21 unfortunately he didn't have a very good run this race uh, 16 just just over 16 minutes to say now to the end of this race and a lot of these guys are trying to find the limit to where they can end up Perez he's really thinking about it I don't know, Carmine Sanwell is all over the show as he's coming out of that exit but Perez we had a wee chat with him prior to race start he said he, he was definitely a little bit surprised by the competition surrounding him um, but you know again he's not abusing this track the edge of the track there so if he could just find the time use the track a little bit more he might be okay in that course but he's struggling he's really struggling it does seem to be I think that is just uh, people without uh, new and fresh tyre sets here as I believe no one has taken fresh tyre sets otherwise you would see an absolute scorching pace difference here as we're back on board with the leader in the 37 
BMW M4, beautiful livery, may I add, for one that I'm not sure uh, is a QNOS designed livery. I believe it might be the livery engineer tool in game, but that is one of the best BMW M4 liveries in game I think I've ever seen. The color scheme and everything is good, but enough of me simping over liveries. He has been able to create what I believe is half a lap gap now between him and P2, which is a bit nuts creating it, so I'm not sure what the pace difference is between him and P2 so far. I think uh, we'll, if we return back if... to the garage, we'll be able to get a good idea right now of where everybody is on track. Number oh, the 777 car is off the track again, unfortunately. He's still to serve his stop, uh, apparently, according to the game, so some interest being built up there. Um, in the interest of that, I mean, you've got to serve your stop. You can't, do, you can't not do it if you don't you're going to have a considerable penalty and if you're disqualified so you, you have to do it depend on however strict they're going to make that but McMillan he, yeah he's considerably ahead he's, car number 37 car number 72 is just entering sector 3 uh, into the final corner actually so he's considerably ahead I would say he's about a third of a lap ahead at the moment about a sector to say the least so you know he's He's really built up quite the margin. Right, let's see where we are on the grid now. Bose, he's had a decent race. Unfortunately, he's not had all of his tags attached to his name because he's not joined the server prior so that he could get his gamer ID to change his name. But he is currently sitting P14 in his McLaren at the moment. Had quite a lucky run of things. Out there, he's avoided a little bit of contact that's been happening around. Let's see if we can jump on board with a battle. We don't really have a battle there. We don't have a battle there. We don't have a battle there, unfortunately. Ruberg, he is having a battle, but it's not anything special. It's actually with my back. Um, we're getting to that stage of the race where the battles are becoming few and far between. Again, we're seeing the battle between Ethan Hall and Clifford going on. I I don't know how to describe this. It's gotten a bit heated before, but these guys are fighting tooth and nail for that P12 position. There's not really many other positions available for them. The other cars are over 10 seconds up the road, so they are essentially fighting for scraps at the moment. But can Ethan Hall defend against Clifford? He's done so well so far. Clifford had a bit of pressure from one of the McLarens from the Golf McLaren racing team and uh, it did cause him to go wide at that corner back there but now he is back on pace and it does seem like he is quicker than Hall because he is or on pace at least because they are very close so within a second of each other now battling for P12 but we'll see how this battle develops as Clifford is catching it does seem to be that yeah the fourth though uh, I want your opinion on the Ford, to be honest, because everyone I've uh, spoke to, either commentator or an actual esports racer, uh, either in a team or just a singular independent racer, have very mixed emotions on this Ford Mustang. Obviously, the newest car in ACC, especially with consoles getting a tiny bit later, so I believe it's only a month or so old, uh, the they Ford only, Mustang for console. In, they only got it, like, they actually got it pretty much straight away this time. Um, oh really? This was the first update. That they came. They came exactly at the same time um, as the PC update within a, within a few days. It was fully ruled out. Ruled out on all consoles. Oh, he's gone off. There's a car gone off the track. Though. That's savage. I think he's gone off. Hit the barrier. Oh, oh god, he's completely oh, speared god. off the track. Now that's an example of someone that's not driven on grass before with slick tires and I think. Now I think that might have been a wheel disconnect just by looking at the inputs unless he has just full throttled it. But obviously we can't see a replay here. Uh, but yeah, it kind of looked like by the steering inputs a steering wheel disconnect. But it definitely could have just been him flatting it out on the grass as you mentioned. Uh, but now with one of the more successful Mustang shit tonight. Clifford still putting pressure on Hall in the 25 Ferrari 296. They're both setting relatively similar lap times as it stands, but it is still Hall who is setting the faster lap times. So we are going to start seeing the gap between Hale, Hall 
and Clifford starting to increase as we can see now it was 0.9 or 9 tenths originally now down now up to 1.1 seconds going into sector one now I will jump in and say as well the Mustang my opinion on it is it's it's a solid mix between the BMW M6 and I feel also with its oversteady nature I feel like it's a good mix between the Mercedes and the M6. It's a V8 engine, so it's very torquey. Um, it's also one of those cars that does seem to favour its straight line speed over there and anything else, and high speed cornering seems to be its, its main suit, because you can see it struggles out of these corners. Like the, If you can get it planted in a straight line and get it going, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be able to, to perform for you, but in terms of Ethan Hall and his capabilities right now, he is showing that the Ferrari is a much better car around here than that Mustang, unfortunately. But we will see tracks where that Mustang will thrive on. And there's still plenty to come this season. This is only the first round. So if we see Ethan Hall develop a somehow a much faster pace, he is sliding out of those corners, trying to put his foot down a little bit too early, to say the least. Um, he is going to have a little bit of time to learn this car this season. Under 10 minutes to go now in the first round of the BGT World Challenge. Now, Ethan Hall, he's, he's held off numerous attacks from Clifford, who's actually dropped down to P14 because of his uh, little moments he's had. Uh, both now joining the fight. He has been in extremely quick these past 10 laps. I would actually say he's probably one of the quickest cars on the track at the moment, if you don't disagree with me, Aces. You would be correct there, sir. He's, he's really putting his foot down now, showing that he has got the pace to push into the top 12. Now, can he be able to catch P11? It's a different story. P11 is going to go away matter what because he's only got three minutes to serve his stop he's not done it he's gonna have to and if he doesn't do it he's gonna get disqualified he's getting constant drive through for track limits he's not having a good time out there as Kieran McKenty um, and we're yeah. gonna see MK Motorsports somehow generate something out of this race even though it did look like all, all hope was lost early on with the qualifying pace not being up to scratch. They've managed to hold off numerous attacks and watch people around them die. Um, they are in a position to make something out of this, but look at Bose now. He is absolutely flying. It's almost like a completely different driver has appeared in that car. Ooh, not my vage poorly. <laughs> I think he might have just spun that, but he's like going, he's uh, no, he hasn't spun. He just lost out of the position, unfortunately. But that was obviously to him getting a blue flag. Uh, but now, yeah, Bose, I'm assuming he might appear for tyres then. Or he's doing a light fuel strategy at the end of this race as he gets really loose. They're going into turn three there. But it does seem Ethan Hall just trying to put no pressure on himself now. He has to give, well, he doesn't actually have to give this place up at all uh, to uh, P3. He, it's advised to, but obviously in the rule books, there isn't really any objection for him. To let him go, but obviously it's blue flags at the end of the day, so you should be letting him go. Uh, now we do see the fight continues between P11 and 12 of Ethan Hall and Bose going on to the back straight. Now this is going to be one of the more complex corner systems as well, going through the final few corners. This is where the overtakings could happen. As he goes wide there, there's nearly a Max Verstappen move there. Uh, Austria, but that doesn't seem to work from just yet. Just trying to leave him absolutely no room. For any sort of attempt for an overtake, that that's going to be a track cut for himself there, for the McLaren, and that is going to be one closer to a drive-through for himself there. Yeah, it's very unfortunate to see him make that mistake at this point in the race. He cannot be doing any more of that. He could cost himself considerable positions. He's gone right there again, maybe over pushing the car to try and get this position. Unfortunately, trying to get this position doesn't help anyone if your car gets disqualified or gets a drive through because you've been the one that's driving it too hard. Now the argument is always, there's a, there's always that balance and 
drivers will always talk about trying to find that balance between pushing the car to the right amount and, or sorry, the perfect amount to get the perfect lap. Um, and unfortunately, we, we find that that balance can sometimes get overthrown by the car saying no. Right now, it seems that Bose's car is saying no to him. He's really trying too hard to get that car to go up. Whereas even Hall is just driving his car. He's not over pushing the car. He's not pushing track limits. He's generally just trying to get to the end. And he's got this McLaren right up his trumpet trying to tell him, you've got to go quicker or, or I'm going to have that position. And I think when it comes to Bose, he's really got an opportunity here to make something of this. I think what Ethan Hall's done, he's tried to stall Bose's progress because he knows Bose has the potential to catch his now. teammate. And now it's all down to the opportunities around him. Can he make this stick if he gets the overtake? And has Ethan Hall done enough to stop his teammate Kieran Evans being caught? I think he might have now. There's only five minutes left. I don't think there's enough time left in this race for him to make an opportunity out of this. Not, I'm not sure, because uh, the way he's flashing at the moment, Bo's trying to just put as much pressure as he can uh, onto Ethan Hall here to try and get this position done. Again, it's so unpredictable. The 25 of Ethan Hall seems to be over, uh, very confident in terms of defending here, especially at quite a narrow track like Misano. The overtaking zones are quite limited, so you do have to do some risky moves like this one. For example, Bo's trying to go around the outside into turn three there but doesn't seem for him to work and 40 has lost a lot of time there and that's just one of the risks there that you have to manage when going for a move like that because at this point he's going to be very impatient here Bose and wants to try and get this move done as quickly as he can and that is going to obviously involve some very risky moves as I mentioned earlier but if it goes wrong obviously it could either go two ways you could lose so much time between you and Ethan Hall uh, for example right now or it could end in both of you in tears Definitely. We're going to just step away from that battle real quick just to see what's going on around the grid. Alex Myers in P4 at the moment. Um, and it does seem like Tom Lynch is P14, so he's managed to keep his pace going. Um, the battle is still continuing between these guys. It's not really changed much. The dynamic is exactly the same. Ethan Hall under pressure from Bose in the number 27 McLaren. And it's going to be a constant pressure now. I think no matter what happens, um, Ethan Hall has done a fantastic job to keep his teammate out of the dirt here. I think he's done what he's been employed to do by the team over at MK Motorsports, and that is be the wall. And right now he has done that very well. We've got a drive through for the number 93 car. That is Alex Byers. He gets a drive through. He was P4. He's going to drop down considerably. We just actually were on board with him a few seconds ago. But he sent it wide at the last corner. And that has meant that he is going to have to just try and get to the end of the race and see where he ends up. I don't think there's any point of him serving a drive through now. He's just got to get to the end and just hope and pray exactly where he is. Uh, McMillan now, he's coming into the end of this race and he's done a fantastic job all round. Now, Steindl in P8 as well in the Lamborghini, a driver definitely to watch this season. And McMillan is definitely a driver to watch. He has been ex exceptional. I mean, there's only, ever, only that word that I can use to describe him, exceptional. Outstanding drive from him. He's going to be into, near enough, his last lap when he comes round here. Uh, but Idem as well, not having the fastest of races, uh, but has managed to find himself in P3. So he's just trying to get the car home. Uh, Barney in P2 as well. He's done very well today for Team BBR Racing. And they are just trying to get to the end. That car looks like it has been in the wars. Bose is still trying to get past Ethan Hall. These guys are going at it, tooth and nail at the moment. Are we going to see a late move? It's near enough onto the last lap of the race and these guys are still fighting for this position. It's been going on for the last 20 minutes now. It just shows you how competitive these two 
Well, you could say, yeah, these two drivers currently are. Yeah, I thought the other car in the background was for the position as well. That is a back marker who has obviously caught up because of how much these two are fighting. But it does seem both has been able to catch up again. Also does the same mistake he did last lap. Well, not last lap, but a few laps ago. It's getting very loose on the exit there. But now going in to one of the multiple hairpins we have on this track here. He is still gaining time, though, onto Ethan Hall. But it doesn't seem he's going to be able to gain enough time. So we do now see the message the leader is on the final lap. So he only has one more lap to try and redeem himself, to try and potentially get P11 in the bag here. Because obviously every point counts, especially during the starting of the seasons. Just trying to get any sort of gap between you and your rivals at any given time is just so crucial here. As well as we see a bit of a train forming behind with the Porsche and the Ford Mustang as well behind. Which does seem to be getting a bit rowdy as well as the clock now ticks. 2-0, we do now see them coming over to cross uh, the line. They still have one more lap to go, though, because of we do see uh, the leader go on to the final lap. We do see Bose isn't going to be able to do it just yet. He starts another lap, though, uh, so we will find out in the next lap or so That'll if he's going to be able to get this done. There for Bose. He's went really, really deep into that corner. Sorry, really early into that corner, trying to try and get the line. For that next one at the end of the straight i don't know if he's struggling with those tires definitely he's at a situation now where he's definitely running minimum tc on his car and he might be able to see he's on two tc so that's why he's losing it and even all i guarantee he's probably on a higher tc set than that car works so much better now the thing is are we going to see this move it's going to be a very late move he does it. He's trying to set up the car on the inside. He's going down the inside line. He's going there. But Ethan Hall's there and he's spun. He's really caught the curb on the inside. Bose making an absolute pig's ear of that. He's going to hate himself so much. He's going to hate himself so much. He could have had that move done and dusted. And he's flashing as if it was Ethan's fault. Ethan was just driving, I think. Oh, I'm and, just sad. I don't feel like there was any sort of pushing going on. I didn't see any pushing going on there. I, I, I don't know how there would be an argument if there was to be something there, unless it's been a very, well, I would say a naughty play from Ethan to, to press him. But you can't might do try that again. Easy, thinking of it, yeah. we still have one potential overtaking zone going into the final corner here. I don't think it's going to be. He for is him. quite close, but he's not going to be close enough, unfortunately. Yeah, you're right. And boss now unlucky in his exploits today as he's sort of really lost the back end there i'm sure he's hit. he's he's kicking himself he could have made that over overtake a lot better than he tried even hall defending down to the last line and uh yeah very well done from the ferrari driver the number 25 mk motorsports holding on to p11 there barney finishing p4 in the end uh, McGowan finishing P3, so a couple of... I don't think that's correct. I think we'll see the actual scores come through the door in a second when everybody finishes the race. Idem's still got to cross the line, uh, but he's had a very good race, I think, in terms of his pace. A few drivers in the pits instead of finishing. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I'm assuming that's just a, a disconnecting thing. Yeah. There we go, McMillan was your winner. 30 seconds gap to Barney in P2, Idem in P3, Ian McGowan taking on P4, Chris Ruberg in P5, Castillo in P6, Steindl in P7, Myers in P8, tipping in the stake pick racing car that was the only one that actually survived most of the race without getting clattered the whole time in P9, Evans in P10, MK Motorsports getting getting p10 and 11 there and unfortunately he didn't get a chance to see the rest there but i'm sure we'll catch it in the edit we'll see if we can get the top three in um that was mcmillan let's see if if they're interested in jumping in for a chat um i have to apologize though i'm gonna have the bounce because i need to quickly go in and connect my brother uh so i am so sorry about that see but, if uh obviously congrats to the podium See if I can get him in. Thank you very much for today, Aces. Everybody, big round of applause for him for jumping in with us. Um, and a big thank you. Thank you for having me on board. I'll everyone. see you in two weeks. Easy break. See you later. 
Um, I'll only catch the top three because I still need to go and vote. Um, and they close in a couple of minutes. So I'll maybe see if I can get a few people in. Most likely, Kieran McMillan, if I can get you. Um, can I get P2 and P3, please, as well? That would be fantastic. But what a fantastic race to the end. It was enjoyable all throughout for us. We watched it. Uh, a big, a huge apologies to me uh, from myself. Trying to understand the system at which this works is very hard. I don't understand it. Uh, well, actually, we can get Ben in just, just for the interview for P2 just now, since he's sitting there. Ben, thank you very much for wanting an interview. Uh, congratulations, P2, your first outing here in VGT. How'd it go? Yeah, it went very well, thank you. Um, it was kind of lucky, really. I only sort of really put about an hour around this track in total, um, and I was struggling with a setup beforehand. And um, luckily, as we went out for free practice in here, I loaded in a new set, and yeah, it felt great. Just felt with one with a car. Uh, shame about my teammate, because I tried phoning him before the race to share my set with him. So, yeah, he should have been up there with me. Um, but yeah, thanks to Go Setups for the good setup, and yeah, it was fun racing with all you guys. It was a really clean race. Definitely, it was very clean. We saw a few incidents, but that's always to be expected. Yourself, you stayed out of trouble. How did you feel when you know you saw the cars around you getting penalties? Um, to be honest with you, it's quite distracting, really, as I'm quite new to sim racing myself. This is only probably about my third or fourth month in total sim racing, so um, there's a lot of things that pop up which still do catch my attention and sort of makes me make a little bit of a mistake, but overall um yeah it was good everybody else was good clean racing sort of let me do clean passes and such so Definitely. yeah look forward to doing more races with you guys excellent well last question right yeah now that the first race is over do you feel like you know you've got an opportunity to make something of this season for yourself i'll be honest with you with the pace that come from first place um <laughs> yeah, unless a miracle happens in the next sort of races, which obviously I don't wish upon the other driver, but yeah, I don't see myself getting anywhere near him, mate. I think he has something stupid like a 20-odd second lead. I mean, that's, from what I see, mate, compared to me, that's like alien times. So, yeah, well well done to first place. But yeah, it'd be nice to get up on the podium, mate, if I can stay consistent. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for jumping in for an interview and congratulations on P2 today for Ben Barney. Brilliant. Cheers. Still waiting for a couple more people. See if uh, Kieran McMillan will jump on and see if we can catch item as well um, for an interview. Hopefully, we can grab them quickly before I have to disappear. Probably get one more in. Uh, I, think I can get both of these together, actually. That would be great, just because I do need to go and vote. Been so busy setting up for this stream today, and still things went wrong. Makes me feel so great. Um, I'll give you a minute to join the chat before I end. Uh, it's Idem can't join us for an interview, unfortunately. Um, he's too shy. I'm sure, we'll get an interview with him some point this season. Kieran, if you're able to join me quickly, that would be fantastic. See if he's about. I don't know if he's going to join. Um, I think I might have to call it there. Anyway, I'll maybe catch him early on next week if he's uh, not next week, but maybe the week after for an interview. If not, I'll maybe try and catch him during the week, um, and that will be uploaded via YouTube. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching the first round here at Misano for the VGT World Challenge, and we'll catch you all again very soon. Good night. God bless.